It's all start with the now abandoned boat from Owen, the husband that has committed suicide. Now her widow wife Therese no more meaning to use it, it just keeps stationary on the pier. The sounds of nature of this house built in the middle of a virgin forest side, far from any sign of life and civilization, only connect to the city through a road without light. The history is about a widow, who discovers a dark secret about the house her late architect husband built. His pencils and papers, of his profession, Owen was an architect, who designed the house he lived in. Now an empty house, full of bitterness and good memories gone for no reason. Beth has just lost her husband Owen to suicide. Devastated, she spends her nights drinking and going through Owen's belongings. She tries to seem stable and in control, but her friend Claire and neighbor Mel are concerned for her. She watches videos of her wedding and would never have thought it could end so soon and unexpectedly. She tries to sleep but can't see the empty side of the bed that bothers her. In the middle of the night, Beth heard a knock on the door and is going to investigate what happened. She walks down the stairs with apprehension wondering what this can be about in the middle of the night. And she doesn't see anything strange looking out the balcony. She turns on the outside lights to make sure everything is okay. She is startled by a figure, through the window in the kitchen. Scared, she falls asleep in the living room. When leaving the house, almost at the car, she notices the open pier door ego to close it. When closing the pier door, she notices dirt footprints on the stairs, and decides to go down to check. She sees the boat tied to the pier, when she hears a gunshot. Back to work, she arrives late for lecture. She meets the colleague who is also her friend. In the middle of work, she is approached by a mother of her student, who was due to deliver a work, which she did not attend to evaluate, and informed her of what had happened in her life and gave her an evaluation grade for the undelivered work. Back home, she notices again the open pier door. She notices that it's her neighbor, taking a look and taking care of the boat that was unprotected since the event, and they exchange words about the fact, and she lets it be understood that she would like to move and sell the house, but she still didn't have the courage, for it was her late husband who built it. In the meantime, she sees an old video of when they built the house together with her now deceased husband who shot himself. In the house, she organizes things, thinking of a better start. She looks at the house plan book, and notices strange patterns and places that don't match the current one. In the middle of the night, the radio turns on by itself, waking her up. She receives a message on her cell phone, from the supposed dead husband, telling her to come down, she answers who it is, and receives a message telling her not to be afraid. She calls the number again, and a voice similar to her late husband tells her to look outside the house. She looks out the window, and sees her dead husband naked walking on water, however, soon she wakes up, and realizes it was all a dream. Upon waking up, she checks her cell phone for messages from the previous day, and notices that there is nothing that happened last night. In the car she touches the gun that her husband used for the suicide, but puts it away again, thinking that touching it is not a good idea, but she looks at his cell phone, and notices the picture of a mysterious woman. When returning to work, she shows her husband's cell phone to a colleague, and notices a photo of a woman similar to her on the device, but soon stops thinking that he may have had an extramarital affair. She goes to a bar with friends and says that strange things are happening at her house, but maybe it's nothing, but she ends up making her friends uncomfortable by bringing it up and asking them if they believe in ghosts, she even brought the letter from suicide to meeting with friends who definitely didn't like it at all. She returns home with her friend, and falls asleep talking to her. She wakes up alone to a loud and strange noise, it gabs a flashlight and go outside to see what's happening. She hears whispers, and goes to investigate what happened. She sees several women running through the woods half naked and then jumping sterically into the lake, as if running away from something that was chasing them. When looking at the lake, she sees no sign of the girls who jumped. She goes towards the boat to see if she can repair something, but when looking at the boat, she notices bloodstains everywhere. She feels a mysterious presence that when it touches her, makes her faint and gets into the boat. As she lies unconscious on the boat, a blood moon appears in the cloudy sky. When she wakes up, she finds herself on the other side of the lake and sees a house just like hers. She hears sighs saying she is dreaming and notices the several women who had just thrown themselves in the lake and that her husband is also there. She asks herself if there are keys where she usually leaves them, and she finds them, and when she enters the house, she finds herself sleeping, and when she wakes up she sees the door open. Awake, she looks at her husband's computer and sees pictures of several different girls, which scares her, leaving her wondering why the photos are. While walking through the forest, she comes across the neighbor, and tells him that I saw lights from a house on the other side of the lake, but he reveals to her that there is no house on the other side of the lake, that by the land it is not possible to build it. 
Walking through the woods, she comes across an abandoned house. She enters the house to investigate, and on her walk she finds a voodoo doll. She goes to meet the neighbor, and reveals to him that he found an abandoned house and a voodoo doll there, and he reveals to her that he once found her late husband with another woman there, but was told not to reveal this information to her, which only heightens her suspicions of an extramarital affair. She looks in her husband's things for something that might give clues about what happened, and finds a voodoo book, reading, she see that is about how to trick and trap demonic entities for personal gain. In the middle of the research, she accidentally dropped the voodoo doll, and immediately she hears footsteps coming from the upper floor of the house, and with courage she goes to investigate. While looking for the source of the footsteps, she comes across a haunted apparition, making her drop a bottle of whiskey in the floor, crying that she possible lost her sanity. She goes to the local bookstore to find out more about voodoo books, mainly to see what else her husband was looking for there, if he had any books he had ordered or what others he had taken. At the bookstore she finds the girl in the photo on his cell phone named Madeline, who was an employee and she says that her husband was always there, and ends up telling him about his suicide. She goes to her friend's house, and says that she found the girl on his cell phone and that she also asked her, if they were having an affair, which she denied, so she wondered why she had her picture, if it wasn't an affair, which one that would be the reason. Back home, she drinks and tells him to leave her alone, with that, she hears a knock on the door. She gets downstairs and see Madeline the girl from the bookstore just going away, she convinces her to get in to talk, she offers a drink to her, and she leaves in what she has to say, and she says he took her to the house he was building nearby, and they kissed, but he had remorse and took her away. She goes at night through the rain, impatient in the abandoned house, looking for answers that may be there. Walking through the house in the dark, only with a flashlight, she steps on a broken board. Looking closely with a flashlight, she comes across a grave full of bodies, possibly the women she has been having visions of. She runs back to the house, and calls her friend, who goes to the answering machine to tell her what she found, but doubts her sanity, in view of the latest events. After taking the rain and the frightening sight she witnessed, she decides to take a shower, and the radio turns on by itself again, in the middle of her shower. She cries sitting on the floor, feeling that she can't take any more, and notices the message here, stamped on the mirror. She feels and touches the presence, and calls for her husband, but the presence replies that it is not him, leaving her in panic. She tries to escape, but suddenly the door locks, and leaves her trapped in the room. She looks in the mirror, and sees a girl being attacked and killed by her husband. She is attacked and hits her head on the mirror, now seeing herself on the other side of the mirror to her dismay. She sees a girl hiding under the bed, and soon after, her husband, dragging a body into the bedroom. She sees a presence, which notices her, and she runs afraid downstairs. She sees her husband having intercourse with another woman, and notices there, this malevolent presence. The house moves, and she is forcibly taken and thrown to the ground, and for every room she passes, she sees her husband killing a different woman. The demon in the form of her husband, tells her that he always whispered in her husband's ear, to make his killing wishes, but he refused to kill her and he had to put an end to him and that every time she closed eyes, she would see him, until he could possess her. She soon wakes up, however, the demon attacks her again. This time she doesn't escape, and she feels that perhaps he caught her for good this time. The next day her friend shows up to see her, but she doesn't find her, but the empty bag of the gun, which makes her desperate to find it, making her run to every room in the house. She finds herself in this red world in a boat, and sees the devil in it. Her friend and now the neighbor keeps looking for her. The demon gives her the gun, telling her it's the only way to go. At the last moment, hope speaks louder and she is saved by her friend. 